The world of the too small is not the only world we do not see in our casual, unaided inspection of the universe. Entire worlds can be hidden between two instants of time as well as between two pinpoints of space. We are bound to time. We can see only what the passage of time shows us, and our passage of time leaves much unseen. We see the fact of life, but so often we do not and cannot see the intimate detail of life as it hurries by. Our time-defeating tool is the camera which can take individual photographs in fleeting fractions of a second, which can split the second into a far greater number of parts than our eyes can. In 1938, Harold Edgerton, a pioneer in high-speed photography, made black and white films at 1,200 frames per second. When run at the normal 24 frames per second, each moment of time is magnified 50-fold. A second takes nearly a minute to pass our eyes. Modern high-speed photography goes much further and makes a single second stretch to nearly seven minutes. crashes through a window pane. The glass moves absently outward, seemingly free of gravity. We turn on the light, and the filament begins to vibrate with energy long before the slow heating has reached the point of glow. ordinary flight, the wings of a common house fly beat at 175 times per second. But with high-speed photography, the fly hangs almost motionless in flight. The wings slow to a steady rhythmic beat. Does a balloon explode when it is punctured? No. The point of the dart enters and fills the hole and the balloon remains intact. It is only when the rubber fabric tears some instants after the puncture that the air escapes and the balloon collapses. A cat falls and lands on its feet in a coordinated movement too fast to be seen until high-speed photography comes to our aid. In the animal world, Quickness is a means of survival, but what happens with blinding speed in nature is revealed in much greater detail by the high-speed camera. If much in the world around us happens too quickly for us to see, the reverse is also true. When we look at the plant world, we deduce a stillness, an inactivity. We deny it the appearance of motion that the animal world so abundantly possesses. But the camera can take one picture now, and another sometime later, and so on. Time is compressed, and the plant world bursts into motion.
even when things are neither too fast nor too slow, we are frequently prisoners of inattention. We don't look about us long enough. We don't look closely enough. So much of the world around us, even when it is there to see, goes virtually unseen. Have you ever looked closely at the small world of insects? There are 850,000 different species, more than all other animal species put together. But for the most part, they are anonymous until a lens reveals an astonishing world of form, structure, and beauty, endless in variety. small world of living things, there are dramas as huge as anything that happens in the larger world of nature. Outstanding nature photographers like James W. Wilkie capture many of these moments with skill and understanding. A spider makes its web with unconscious artistry, spinning a geometry no Euclid ever taught him. He does it neither to demonstrate a theorem nor to create art. He needs to eat and the frail beauty of his sticky threads is a deadly trap. The grasshopper that blunders into it cannot free itself, nor is the spider disposed to let it do so. Brutal? No, for animals must eat, and death is part of life. Consider the male Cecropia moth. It is constructed in beauty with strong, colorful wings, with sharp senses. Its antenna can detect the scent of a female moth a mile and a half away. Yet all its design has one purpose only, reproduction. And he must locate a female quickly, for he has neither mouth nor digestive system. He is marked for quick and inevitable death. In the only act of his moth life, he fertilizes her eggs. And work done, flutters to the ground to die. The female has one more act for her part. Carefully, she must lay her eggs on the leaves that will serve as their food. That done, she too will die. The orphaned eggs each contain enough food to allow the specks of life within them to develop into small black furry caterpillars. Their only function in life now is to eat. The female moth has chosen their food supply with unerring instinct. On any other kind of plant, they would starve. The caterpillar grows and its soft tissues expand against the unyielding cuticle, which must eventually split. The caterpillar crawls out of the broken skin, it molts, and a new and larger cuticle forms. By the fifth molt, the hormonal balance within the caterpillar begins to change its pattern of life. The food reserve it has laid up within will see it through, and it will never eat again. It begins to form thin silk threads of a special protein produced by glands of its own body. It weaves them about itself, establishing a soft white prison, thicker and thicker, returning to a new kind of egg. It is a new kind of egg indeed, for within it, the 
caterpillar retires from life, becomes still. Within itself, its entire body plan is broken down and rebuilt in an utterly new fashion. The seasons change as the house of silk clings to its branch. Within, undisturbed, the work of rebirth goes on. Spring comes, the work is done. The spark of life brightens and flares. What was once a caterpillar breaks through its cocoon and emerges, a caterpillar no longer, but a brilliant Cecropia moth. waiting for its wings to dry and grow strong enough to carry it. The life cycle has come full circle. But what is the purpose of it all? What does it accomplish? In itself, little. But it is not in itself and by itself. It is part of the fabric of life. Insects feed upon plants. They, in turn, are fed upon. One species could not live without the other. Like an intricate maze, lines connect this species to that into a huge single world of life of which man is a part, of which man is only a part. Thank you.